Hey, how's everybody doing? Welcome to another exciting episode of X-Ray Education. Okay, so today we're going to be talking a little bit about the energies that's the, the energy that's involved in the creation of the X-ray beam and a little bit of the mechanism, the operation of the inside of the X-ray tube. So if y'all would, just bear with me momentarily. We're going to get this show on the road. Moments ago at the outset of this video, we heard kind of a buzzing noise come from the x-ray apparatus. And we typically don't hear that because we're on the other side of the leaded glass, we're out there at the control panel. The patient hears it all the time though. It's a kind of a bzzzt noise that's made whenever we make an x-ray exposure. Now, where the heck does that noise come from? What's causing it? Well, it's the nature of our x-ray production that we need to do that. And I don't have but a couple of colors here, so I may be taking off in just a second to go get some more markers. But for the time being, and hopefully this is going to be visible for everybody. Now, if you're in x-ray school, which I'm guessing most of you are, you're either in school or planning to, to get to school at some point in time in the near future, well, you're going to recognize this, and I'm going to label this the anode. Okay, anode, cathode are things we use in x-ray. The anode is always going to be our positively charged area inside the x-ray tube. Okay, so you'll have to imagine that there's an x-ray tube surrounding this thing. I'm not going to draw that today. We'll take a look at some x-ray tube diagrams later. Who knows, maybe I'll, you know, find one that I can blend in here. I'll see what I can do. All right, so I'm gonna make some drawings here. I've got the anode, and then over here, I'm gonna draw my little curly, uh, this is basically like a light bulb filament, and what this is, this is part of the cathode, my filament. Okay, now, in general terms, what I've got in my, for my filament circuit, I've got a current that is, you know, it's, it's current that comes into the building, it's 220 volts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run that current through a step-down transformer. Now, you might be thinking, well, that doesn't make any sense. Why do you want to step your current down? Well, here's why. Now, I want to step my voltage down, and I'm going to step my current up. I hope this isn't too confusing. So, I'm going to go through a step-down transformer that's going to take my 220 volts and it's going to drop that down to, you know, maybe 12 volts or something along those lines. But it's going to increase my amperage to, you know, around 3 to 6 amps. So, my filament current is 3 to 6 amps, not milliamps. You'll need to know this for the registry, by the way. 3 to 6 amps is my current, which is 3,000 to 6,000 milliamps. That's how we measure our current going across the, the bridge here that we're about to create. Okay, so I've got some current going into this filament. Now, whenever I charge this filament and I get this thing uh, electrified, what's going to wind up happening is it's going to start glowing. And it's going to give off light, but it's going to give off something else too. The heating of this filament is going to cause electrons to be liberated. And I'm just going to put some little letter E's around this thing. And these electrons are emitted isotropically, which means in a ball. And for the time being, let's just pretend like that that's all there is to it. This is just basic x-ray production. So, what winds up happening? I've got a bunch of electrons here, and I've charged the entire circuit with DC current. So I've got a positive charge on the anode, 
and I've got a strong negative charge on the cathode. And typically, if I've got my uh, kilovoltage set for 80 kVp, then what's going to wind up happening is I'm going to have about 40,000 volts positive and another 40,000 volts negative. So 40 plus 40, because remember, since opposites attract, 40 plus 40 is 80. That's going to give me my total of 80 kVp. 80 kilovolts. So the deal is this. When I go to close my circuit, these electrons are going to be attracted to this anode with a force of 80 kilovolts. 80,000 volts. And that's going to cause these guys to fly pretty fast. They're not going to go the speed of light, but they're going to go about 50% of the speed of light, which is, you know, booking when you're talking about only jumping a distance of one or two centimeters. So these electrons are going to travel very, very quickly, and they're going to encounter the anode at this area here, which we, we refer to as the focal track. but the exact spot where they hit is going to be called the focal spot. Okay, so this is my focal spot. And from here, my x-rays are going to emit. And somewhere down here, is a patient. There's my patient, and he's the recipient of my x-rays. So, this is the source of that buzzing noise that you hear. Because when these electrons fly, what they actually are is a tiny little lightning bolt. So when you make an x-ray exposure and you hear that buzzing noise from the tube, that's what it is. Okay, so very quick, now that I've seen this and kind of gone over this a little bit with you, I've decided that what I need to do is a full-on video on radiographic physics. And we're going to start from the beginning because we've kind of jumped to the, to the end here. This is the end product is the x-rays. but we had to go through a lot of machinations between the electricity that came in from the power company and the actual x-ray production. So how in the heck did we convert that alternating current to DC and how did we get high voltage on one section of the tube while simultaneously achieving low voltage on another section of the tube? Okay. We'll be back with another chapter of X-ray education where we'll explain all about that too in the future. Um, but for the time being, quick and dirty X-ray production in case one of your patients asks, you know, what was that buzzing noise? You can tell them it was the electrons traveling from the cathode to the anode and creating the X-ray beam and it just makes that funny little noise. But it's absolutely nothing to worry about. All right, y'all, thanks very much for watching another episode of X-Ray Education. I appreciate it, as always. And if you like our videos, then please like and subscribe. And I'll just keep cranking out more of these things until further notice. All right, take care. Have a great day.